Now, I'm not normally a, uh, a coffee person, but this uh, this Ethiopian lady's been um, selling coffee at the farmer's market, and it's really fucking good. <laughs> My name's Will, and this is Will to Read. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to be introducing you all to a genre of comics I've fallen in love with over the past year or so, and think should be on more people's radar. But before I start, I think it would be uncouth to not mention that this video's format is heavily influenced by Juan over at Plague by Vision's various introduction videos. So, without further ado, uh, let's get into it. Poetry comics, or comics poetry depending on who you ask. I'll be using poetry comics in this video because I think it rolls off the tongue better, but I've read some good arguments as to why it should be the latter and get if people prefer it. Have arguably been around as long as comics have, but it's really come into its own as a distinct genre in the past decade or so. The quickest definition is it combines the sensibilities and style of the two mediums of comics and poetry to make something which exists in both realms simultaneously, but also is uniquely its own. How one interprets this can vary, and I think that's one of the great strengths of the genre. Some simply illustrate a poem, some make it so that illustrations add something to or juxtapose the words, other make images which convey the essence of poetry in a pictorial form. For more in-depth discussion of this topic, I'd highly recommend Alexander Rothman's essay, What is Comics Poetry?, and Peony Gent's essay, Poetry Comics, Communication, Collaboration, and Connection, both of which I will link in the description. My goal here is to give you a good starting point by listing a few artists that I think are a good spread of the kind of stuff out there. Of course, this will be skewed towards my personal taste, so keep that in mind. The easiest place to start would be with the anthology series that some credit with popularizing the form, or at least giving it the first space of its own, Ink Brick. Over its six-year run, Ink Brick published ten issues filled with dozens of different artists who either dabble in or work exclusively in the genre. Like any anthology, I find the content varies in quality, but that's according to my own tastes. Work that I find boring, others may find intriguing, and work I find amazing, others may find boring. That's how art works. Uh, if you want to start anywhere, I'd start here. Just pick up any issue and get reading. You're bound to find an artist that you love. The first artist I want to discuss is actually one of the editors of Ink Brick, Paul K. Tunis. Of the specific artists I'm going to discuss, Tunis is probably the most distinctive in his use of color. All of the comics I've read of his use this very specific shade of blue, and there's rarely black or white lines in them. I quite enjoy both Tunis's words and images. They're both steeped in layers of meaning and clearly serve particular purposes but I find the illustrations tend to be there to enhance the words, rather than the other way around. Because of this, I see him as exemplifying artists who tend to lean more on the poetry side of the poetry comic spectrum. If the words were removed from the pictures, they'd be a nice discernible poem, but if you saw the images in isolation, they wouldn't really have much coherence. Next, I want to discuss possibly my favorite artist working in this genre, Peony Ghent. Ghent is a very skilled poet who is able to express her feelings in some of the most beautiful prose I've ever read. I also really like her art style. It comes across as very sketchbook-esque and serves to set a mood for the words. For example, in her recent work, For Sarah, Ghent mostly depicts suburban houses and empty fields which serve to make the reader feel as though they are joining Ghent on a reflective walk through the countryside as she remembers her deceased childhood friend. Alternatively, in her comic Static, the art instead serves to enhance the message by providing separate visual metaphors alongside the written ones. While Ghent is still more word-focused than image-focused, 
I do think her comics could stand on their own if the words were removed, and that the emotional impact would still come across well. Next, I'm going to discuss Mare Adomo, whose comic Late Bloomer was my introduction to poetry comics. Late Bloomer is very emotionally raw in its words and its art. It doesn't bother with beautiful prose, instead being very direct with what Adomo is feeling and expressing in it. The style changes throughout the work, going from cute, rounded figures and lettering, to more realist style drawings, to sketchy, to literally just scribbles. At times, it feels like I'm looking at a person's private diary. It's uncomfortable, but in a good way. I think it's pretty much impossible to separate the words from the art of Late Bloomer, because if you remove the words, you would be removing part of the art. Thus, I think it's a great example of a more comic-focused poetry comic that still delves into the realms of traditional poetry. <music> Lastly, I want to discuss the work of Marion Fayol. Unlike other artists I've mentioned so far, Fayol's work rarely contains words, what most people would consider the poetry part of poetry comics. But that's an arbitrary limitation, and I won't let you impose that on people. Fayol instead works with visual metaphor, getting across beautifully intricate ideas purely through her illustrations, and I personally think she's the best example of this strain of poetry comics. And now, a list of artists I like but cut for time. Gia Gordon, Kevin Zatt, L. Nickel, Aaron Cockle, Jesse Racklaw, Heather Simon, Chrissy William, Wynn, Mayel Dolevu, Kieran Katz, Jenny Zervakis, M. A. Noremia, Alexander Rothman, Simon Morton, Bianca Stone, and last but not least, me! That's right, it's time for some shameless self promotion! I, very occasionally, draw comics, and my most recent stuff has been heavily influenced by poetry comics. So, if you'd like to check that stuff out, I've linked my Instagram and Gumroad, which probably needs to be updated, uh, in the description. Okay, uh, let's move on so I don't explode from the uncomfortableness. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this introduction to poetry comics. This is a new format for me, so let me know what you thought of it. Uh, my next video will probably be a June wrap-up, so look out for that. Until then, my name's Will, and this has been Will to Read. See you next time.